Hey boys, welcome back to some more NRL Supercoach Season 2020 and in this video we're going to be discussing and analysing the halfback options for this year's uh, Supercoach. So let's get straight into it. I, um, I'm having some troubles with the, the halves. I, I thought I was pretty locked in but honestly, you know, things change very quickly um, <laughs> and at the moment I do have Sean Johnson uh, but honestly, after watching the Auckland Nines, I've got to be honest, Johnson didn't look very good. <laughs> uh, I don't know, dude. I, I, again, I'm not, I'm not, when I make my final team, I'm not really going to take too much into consideration with the Nines. Um, I'm just not going to because I, I don't think it's a good reflection on how things will go. But honestly, Johnson just looked... He just looks slow. Like, I, I don't think he... He didn't really take off or, or do anything in the in the whole tournament. In, I don't I don't remember him doing anything uh, anything special. So, yeah, it does worry me, um, you know. So, I, th I, I still think Johnson is a really good pickup just because he's going to be goal-kicking. I think the Sharks still have a very good team. They have a very good attacking team. Um, and Johnson... He might not have that that absolute spark that he used to in previous years, but I think I think he's more gonna be like a like a ball playing halfback, you know. Rather than taking the line on, which is obviously what we want to see, he's still gonna have plenty of try assists, plenty of line break assists, especially you know with Bryn Nakora outside of him. Hopefully, Bronson Sherry goes to another level. So I think that I think there's still points on offer. So Sean Johnson. <laughs> I'm not I'm not dismissing him and I might still start with him but he's definitely he's definitely worrying me slightly um Nathan Cleary he's obviously I don't know if he's going to be the favorite I think he will be the most picked halfback um and I don't think it's a trap I think I think I think it's a good pickup because you know stats have shown when Maloney's not at the team Nathan Cleary goes to another level. He's obviously got very good base stats for a halfback. Like, he, he makes plenty of tackles. He, you know, he takes the line on quite a bit every game. He gets the odd offload. So, even if he's not kicking, like, you know, five goals a game, he's not getting a couple of tries. He still scores decently um, with base stats and <clears throat> that sort of thing. So, I think it's a good pickup, but... <sighs> I don't know. It worries me. I actually, I don't think the Panthers are going to go very well this uh, this year. I, I think they're going to struggle. Honestly, I, I think, I think the Panthers are going to have a tough a tough season. So that's that's my only real worry for Nathan Cleary. Um, next up the list, we got Mitchell Moses, who is, uh, I I think also going to be a pretty a pretty popular choice. Um, I haven't really talked about this too much, but the like the um what's it called the scheduling i know nathan i don't know the exact scheduling off the top of my head but i'm i know nathan cleary has like a tough first five weeks like up against you know some of the better teams from last year and i know mitchell moses has like a pretty easy scheduling he he's versing a lot of the bottom teams from last year but Again, it's a new season. Teams are plenty, are like a lot different. Um, I'm not really going to read too much into scheduling early in the season, but Mitchell Moses, he, you know, he he went to another level last year. Can he match it? I, I think the Eels have a have a very good team. I I think they honestly probably have a a better team than last year. Um, so I, I think my, I think the team, the Eels are gonna be a high-scoring team again, and it, it it favors Mitchell Moses. He's the goal kicker. He's obviously very attacking in his own right. So, I, I, these three guys are an a, absolute killer. Obviously, Johnson here is the only half and five eight. So you you can obviously go Johnson and one of these two guys. I mean, if you wanted to spend big money, you could, <laughs> you could go all three um, and have one of those two as the, the backup halfback if you wanted to spend big there. But um, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I At the moment, I'm, I'm, 
I'm leaning towards having Johnson as my 5-8 and... Actually, no, <laughs> because I just remembered, we'll talk about it when we go to the 5-8s, but there's a guy there that is jumping out at me that I have to pick, so I don't know. This is going to be one of the tougher choices. I know I've said like the fullbacks and the second row options I felt like were the toughest, but I actually feel like the halves are, are very, very difficult this year. <laughs> and honestly, just as a, a first thought, I actually think Mitchell Moses is probably the best selection out of these three guys. Just the top of the head, as I'm feeling it right now. Tomorrow, you ask me the same thing, I might say Nathan Cleary. <laughs> Honestly, it's going to come down. It's going to come down to the final teams. I'm going to look at the teams. I'm going to evaluate who I think is going to go well. Because all these guys, they all goal kick. They all are the playmakers. So if they're in a team that I think is going to score a lot of points then they're the obvious selection. And at the moment, I feel like Cleary is probably in the weaker team. I think Johnson and the Sharks will have a good year. I think they should anyway. And I think Mitchell Moses and the Eels will have a, a good year. So uh, it's a tough one. It's a very tough one. Uh, then we got Daily Cherry Evans. Honestly, I... I you know, he's around the same price, but I would not be going Cherry Evans. He's not going to be goal-kicking um, unless something happens because Ruben Garrick is obviously a very good goal-kicker. So, I mean, DC, very good player. He can score He can score big, for sure, like any other half. But I, I, I just... Out of the top three, I don't think Cherry Evans is on the same level this year. Obviously, last year, he did a fair bit of goal-kicking. This year, I don't think he's going to do any goal-kicking. Uh, ben Hunt definitely won't be going Ben Hunt. Luke Brooks definitely won't be going Luke Brooks. Even though, I mean, Luke Brooks scored well last year as well. But yeah, again, I just feel like there's there's better options. Um, Jerome Hughes, I wouldn't be going Hughes, even though I think uh, I think he's a he's a decent option again. But I, even his spot is a little bit it's a little bit up in the air. Um, I think he should start in the halves. Um, I think that John's <laughs> youngster, I think it'd be pretty ridiculous if he gets the spot over Jerome Hughes, but there's that risk as well. Um, Adam Reynolds, again, Adam Reynolds, Townsend, pretty similar type players. Uh, they they can have the odd high-scoring game, but out of the top echelon, you're not going to be going these two guys. Uh, Michael Morgan, he's... He's an interesting one because he is a guy that, if he has a good season, he can be one of the top guys. And obviously, he is a fair bit cheaper. I personally, I, I wouldn't risk it. <laughs> I, I couldn't anyway. He is tempting, but I just, yeah, it worries me. I think, like I said, I think that the Cowboys are going to have a good year, and I think they've they've got a lot more attacking weapons in their side. But I just. Yeah, Michael Morgan definitely uh, is a no-go for me. Um, <clears throat> next up here, Kyle Flanagan. He's a he's an interesting one because he averaged he averaged pretty good at the Sharks. Obviously, I mean he's starting at four sixty-one. He's now playing at the Roosters, and he's probably going to be the goal kicker. Even though he he obviously is touted as a good goal kicker, but when he was kicking when he was kicking goals for the Sharks, dude. He didn't look very good, but obviously he's a good goal kicker. I would I would expect with no Mitchell, he will be the goal kicker. That that definitely piques my interest because I think obviously the Roosters. I don't I don't think the Roosters are going to be anywhere near as dominant as last year or the year before. Um, but I still think they're a team with plenty plenty of points in them. And if he's, <clears throat> I mean, if he's if he's getting like four or five kicks a game. Um, that's a lot of points just in goal kicking. He just needs like some decent base stats and some uh, some attacking stats to really get decent averages. So, uh, I mean, Kyle Flanagan, like if you, I feel like Flanagan, he's a guy. If you wanted to take a punt, he is he's number one priority for taking a punt at like a pod. I don't think many people are going to go Flanagan. Um, and I think he's got the potential to average, honestly, as much as the top guys, potentially. I, the only thing that worries me is the fact that I actually don't... I don't think Kyle Flanagan is that 
good. <laughs> I think, obviously, it's probably a bit rough to say. I think he, he's obviously a good footy player, but I don't think he's that impressive. So that's the only, it's the only sort of worry I have with um with taking the gamble. So I don't think I'm gonna be brave enough to do it, but it's very very tempting. I'm not gonna deny it. Um, and then we go down here, Pierce. Lino, Brown, Croft, all those guys. I mean, again, they can have their day, but I, I wouldn't be, uh, I wouldn't be going there. They're sort of that. I mean, they're the awkward price, and I'm like, if you're gonna take a punt, like I said, if you're gonna take a punt, I, I'd be going Flanagan. Um, yeah, I, I, I just wouldn't go anywhere near those other guys. And then, um, who else have we got here? Lachlan Lewis wouldn't be going anywhere near. Good player, decent, you know, decent base stats, but he's not, he's not, a, he's not going to set the world on fire. Uh, Chanel Harris Tavita, fairly likewise. Uh, as we get down here, Jake Turpin. Okay, this one, I actually, when I made my initial team, I didn't even, uh, I didn't even see Turpin as an option, but of course, he's a uh, dual half and dual hooker. That that has thrown me into a bit of a a bit of a spin, dude. Because if Turpin, I mean, surely Turpin is gonna start at dummy half, and if there's no McCulloch on the bench and Turpin's playing big minutes, he's almost he's basically a must-have. <laughs> he's basically a must-have as a um as a half. I, I I think there's too many options to to put him as a dummy half, but as a halfback, dude, that's like easy points because the the biggest issue with halfbacks is they can be erratic. If you're gonna go the top the top of the top, like Johnson, Moses, and uh, Cleary, you know those guys are they're pretty much banking like getting good scores even if they're not setting it on fire but a lot of other guys they do rely heavily on tries and try assists Turpin if he's playing big minutes dummy half like he's gonna he's gonna get you know 40 40 points in tackles you know he's gonna score well so yeah we'll have to see I I don't know what Seabol's gonna do I, I Honestly, I mean, Turpin should play big minutes, but I, I can't see him not picking McCulloch on the bench. But at the same time, I'm like, McCulloch is not a bench player. Like, in my opinion, if McCulloch is not starting, McCulloch should not be in the team because McCulloch is not a guy that's going to come on and spark. He, he's, he's a guy that would be out there at the start to just stiffen the defense and... um you know, just get through the sets. He's not a guy that would come on when forwards are tired and really spark uh, spark some attacks. So it'll be interesting to see. But Turpin, oh boy, he's... <laughs> I only just saw it, dude, but he's basically a must-have. <laughs> um, like I said, it does come down to, to team list, but yeah, definitely, definitely keep an eye on him. Um, George Williams, I'll, I'll talk about him more at the 5-8 spot. Um, because I actually don't have my team at the moment, but yeah, we'll, we'll talk about him when he's, uh, cause he is duels and, uh, yeah, we'll talk about him more in the five eights. Ashley Taylor, Ashley Taylor is starting extremely cheap and I mean, he has got all the potential in the world to, to average big, big points. I would imagine he's going to be goal kicking as well. Um, I'm just trying to think who would... Obviously, Michael Gordon is gone. He was probably their number one. Ashley Taylor is a very good goal kicker as well. I, who else have they got? I think it'd probably be Taylor. So, 329k, I don't think I'd be able to go there. But honestly, he is a, he is a gamble option. And the more I look at it, the, the more I'm like, Kyle Flanagan versus Ash Taylor... I'd probably gamble on Ash Taylor over Kyle Flanagan, in all honesty. I think Taylor's got more more talent. Um, I think the Titans... I don't think the Titans are going to have an amazing year. Don't get me wrong, but I think they're going to be a... I think they're going to be a team that can score some points, and that obviously bodes well for, for Taylor. Um, so, he's, 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 a, he's, he's a tricky one. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to be able to go there, but... Oh, he's, he's piqued the interest for sure. Uh, and then we go down here. 
Uh, Jerome Luai, dual five eight and a half back. I mean, he's he's basically a must have um, at the moment. Although the more I look at some other guys, I'm like, maybe not. I'm I'm sort of like at the start I was like Luai is definite, but then I'm like, he's two fifty seven k. You go up, obviously, quite, like a little bit to Ash Taylor. Taylor, if he starts, which I, I'm sure he will, um, he should goal kick. He's probably banking to get more points than Luai. And then you go up only slightly more for Turpin. And I think Turpin is a better option than both of those guys. So, Luai, Luai might not be a, uh, a, a lock-in like I, I thought he would with uh with the options here <laughs> it's it's tough dude um and then we go down i mean connor tracy has got serious talent um i don't know if he's going to get a spot in the sharks lineup but he's a very very talented player uh mad burton um it was sort of a race between him and luai i think luai will get the spot but I mean, if Burton gets that starting 5'8 spot, then he's a guy to keep an eye on. Uh, Billy Walters, very talented youngster, has potential, but I don't think he's going to get a spot. Um, and then uh, Luke <laughs> Luke Metcalf, Metcalf, Metcalf. He obviously had an incredible nines tournament. I, uh, I don't think he's going to get a spot at Manly. Um, he could, but... He's a very small body. Um, so, playing in the front line, I, I think he might struggle. I don't think he's going to get a spot, but he's a guy to keep an eye on as a cheapie. Cooper Johns, they were talking about maybe him getting the spot over uh, Jerome Hughes, which I would be shocked at, but maybe. So, another cheapie to keep an eye on. And then, that's, that's pretty much it. So, there's, I, I've got some more thinking to do, dude. <laughs> With the revelation of Ash Taylor and um and Jake Turpin especially, that's that's thrown the door wide open. But um yeah, let me know what you guys are, are going with, who you reckon's a bit of a trap. Um yeah, hopefully you guys are enjoying the the series. Make sure to like and comment and I'll see you in the next one.